Osteoarthritis is a progressive degenerative disease of synovial joints, and the most characteristic feature of osteoarthritis is loss of cartilage. First of all, synovial joints are composed of bones that are covered by cartilage and are surrounded by a articular capsule, and the inner lining of the articular capsule is synovial membrane. So, synovial joints have three major structural components – its bones, cartilage, and synovium. What is important to understand is that cartilage has very weak regenerative capacity, because unlike other tissues, articular cartilage has no vascularization and no innervation, and the only cells that are present in cartilage are chondrocytes. Because chondrocytes in cartilage don't have proper vascularization or innervation, they have very poor nutrients delivery and very low metabolism, and this results in very low cartilage regenerative capacity. By the way, nutrients delivery to chondrocytes occurs by diffusion of nutrients from synovial fluid. Degenerative means that osteoarthritis occurs in a point when cartilage degradation prevails over cartilage synthesis, and this causes cartilage degeneration, basically it's loss of cartilage mass, and the higher become cartilage degradation and the lower become cartilage synthesis, the faster osteoarthritis progress. Progressive means that initially on the first stage of osteoarthritis, there is only minimal loss of cartilage, and this causes minimal clinical symptoms. But then, over time, the damage to cartilage accumulates, and osteoarthritis progresses to the second, then to third, and finally to the fourth stage. And the more damage accumulates, the less cartilage mass remains. Through this progression, structural changes in the joint become more prominent, and we can analyze them on X-ray, and also clinical symptoms become more severe. Osteoarthritis is considered non-inflammatory form of arthritis, but it's not because there is no inflammation, but because inflammatory damage in case of osteoarthritis is not the predominant type of damage. In osteoarthritis, the main factor that destroy cartilage is a mechanical damage, and mechanical damage only subsequently causes inflammation in the joint. To illustrate this, there are bones covered by cartilage, its articular capsule, and the inner lining of the articular capsule is synovium. And when mechanical damage causes cartilage destruction, fragments of cartilage breaks off, and when they come in contact with synovial inner layer, they stimulate macrophages, and macrophages by secretion of pro-inflammatory cytokines promote inflammation. So the major factor in osteoarthritis pathogenesis is a mechanical injury that only subsequently causes inflammatory damage. Also, the second reason why osteoarthritis called non-inflammatory arthritis is that even when macrophages promote inflammation, the severity of this inflammation in osteoarthritis is minimal compared to inflammatory joint disease as rheumatoid arthritis, where inflammatory damage is really severe. The risk factors of osteoarthritis are the factors that increase cartilage degradation or decrease cartilage synthesis. And the most important risk factor is age. In guidelines you can find age older than 50. The reason is that with age, overall regenerative function decreases, so it causes decrease in cartilage regenerative capacity, and the older the person, the more pressure load cartilage has suffered through life, so potentially the more damage is the cartilage. The second risk factor is excessive weight. The more overweight is a person, the higher the pressure load on cartilage, the higher is cartilage degeneration. The third risk factor is trauma. For example, meniscus fracture in relation to the knee joint. Trauma disrupts normal biomechanics of the joint. This leads to intraarticular structural damage that subsequently causes premature cartilage degradation. Another risk factor is congenital pathology and anamnesis, for example, congenital hip dysplasia. With congenital pathology, there is the same principle as with trauma. It also disrupts normal biomechanics of the joint. This leads to intraarticular cartilage damage and causes premature cartilage degradation. To explain the mechanism how trauma or congenital pathology affects joint, let's take for example hip dysplasia. On this X-ray, we see that in normal condition, femoral head located in acetabulum, like ball in socket. But in contrast to this, this dysplasia, femoral head does not place perfectly in acetabulum and because of that, some portion of femoral head is not covered by acetabulum. On X-ray, we don't see cartilage, but cartilage there is this little space between two bones. Cartilage covers the surface of femoral head as well as the surface of acetabulum, and these two bones come in contact with each other exactly by their cartilage. 
and this area where one cartilage comes in contact with another, called cartilage contact area. We have to know this because the main function of cartilage is to absorb pressure that is applied to the joint during physical activity and during standing. Pressure that is applied to the cartilage is equal to force that acts on a cartilage divided on cartilage surface area. And force is equal to mass times gravity constant. So basically force that acts on cartilage is determined only by the weight of a person. That's why overweight person has increased risk of osteoarthritis. Because the higher the mass of a person, the higher the force that is applied to the cartilage, thereby the higher the pressure load on cartilage. And exactly cartilage pressure overload causes premature cartilage degradation. Now let's go back to hip dysplasia. So we see two joints with and without hip dysplasia. Because it's two joints of the same person, the force that acts on these two joints is equal, because force is equal to mass times gravity constant and mass is the same for both joints. So F1 is equal to F2. According to formula, pressure is equal to force divided on surface area. In our case, it's cartilage contact area. Let's suppose that in normal joint, cartilage contact area is 100, so A2 is equal 100. But in case of hip dysplasia, we see that the femoral head is not properly covered by a setabloom. And because of that, obviously cartilage contact area will be decreased. Let's suppose that in case of hip dysplasia, cartilage contact area is 75. So A1 is equal to 75. From formula, force is equal to pressure times cross-sectional area. Because force 1 is equal to force 2, we can write this as P1, which is contact pressure in pathological joint, times cartilage contact area in pathological joint 75, is equal to P2, which is contact pressure in normal joint, times 100, which is cartilage contact area in normal joint. And P1 is equal to 100 divided on 75 P2, which is approximately 1.33 P2. So now we can say that in a joint with hip dysplasia, cartilage undergo pressure load in 1.33 times higher compared to normal joint, or we can say that there is 25% increase in contact pressure within affected joint. If you are interested in accurate calculations, it was determined that 26% smaller cartilage contact area between acetabulum and femoral head cause a 23% increase in contact pressure within the joint. And over time, the increased cartilage contact stress due to the pressure overload caused early cartilage degeneration. It was found that cumulative contact stress is the best predictor of osteoarthritis, and the prevalence of osteoarthritis in 58 years old patients with hip dysplasia was the same as in 68 years old patients with normal hips. So trauma and congenital pathology cause premature aging of the joints. That's why they are considered important risk factors. Another risk factor is very intense physical activity and anamnesis, basically it's former sportsmen. And the reason is that the more intense and regular physical activity, the more pressure overload cartilage undergo, the faster become cartilage degeneration. That's why osteoarthritis called VNT arthritis. So it's the most common risk factors, and in real life or in examination, what is important to understand is that in case of osteoarthritis, age is an extremely important factor. For example, the probability of osteoarthritis in 22 years old male is extremely low. But in case of 55 years old male, osteoarthritis is definitely the diagnosis to consider, especially if it's overweight person. And in addition to this, pay attention to another important risk factors as trauma, congenital pathology, or intense physical activity and anamnesis. And overall, we called osteoarthritis VNT arthritis because it takes a very prolonged period of time for mechanical injury to destroy cartilage. Because in contrast to this, in rheumatoid arthritis, where inflammatory damage prevails, cartilage degradation occurs much more rapidly.